hi leather rock here welcome to my channel this is a live stream since this is one way that i could still make content since wi-fi is on i'll tell you about what's behind me in a minute uh some over two months ago i actually got a few things from sephora and i wanted to do a video about them but then i started having computer problems and wi-fi problems and all that jazz so through the magic of live streaming, I'm able to use this Chromebook and I'm not actually using up the crap that it's already at capacity. And as long as the Wi-Fi doesn't mess up, I can show you some goodies I have. Now, let me see which bag I put them in. I know this looks weird with my looking all these different places. Okay, uh, not here. God, yes, this is live, folks. Uh, oh, here we go. I was trying to make some thumbnails for the Sephora thing. And uh, anyway, long story short, that didn't happen. So I'm going to get back to where the lighting is better. And oh, and then there's somebody that you guys haven't seen for a while. Maybe you might want to see. But hold on a second. Speaking of that. Oh, speaking of that, oh my goodness, he's not losing any weight. This is my tabby boy, you know that. And he was very conveniently in the uh, windowsill. And uh, so many times, as soon as he sees me out with the clapboard, or he sees a computer on, then he runs away and he goes either under the bed, or he goes down the hall, or he does something to make sure that he's going to try not to be in my video until as soon as I get the clap out, then he'll disappear. Or as soon as he uh, uh, hears me clap it, then he runs away. But this time I was actually able to do it and not do a turnaround with him. You know, the reason why I do a turnaround with him is because that's one way that I'm guaranteed to see him. If I had and I do the turnaround, then they can't avoid me because even if they run away afterward, at least they got their appearance. Because I know there's a lot of you guys that only tune in, really, because you want to see my cat. And, uh, yeah. Now, I'm very proud of him lately. He's been uh, defending himself when they have a little altercation, like we're feeding them. And she will wait and watch him eat. And then he has any food left over. He's not even finished eating. And he'll show approach. And sometimes she'll intimidate him and he'll back away even though he'd been eating. And she'll start eating. And the thing is, you look at her. Where the hell does she put that food? So, and then he gets close to her and she smacked to him. Well, sometimes he smacks back. And he keeps his claws in. He doesn't do anything really violent. He just goes and smacks. And, oh, I'm going to say hello to somebody trying to think and... do. Am I doing this right? Yeah, um, I'm trying, what, you know, I'm trying to tape, I'm trying to type on here, and for some reason, my thing is not activating, so I'm not going to worry about that. I want to show you guys what I have from Sephora. Uh, the main thing was, let me get back in the light here, the thing that I like the most, now you know that everything you buy on Sephora you can still get free shipping with no minimum if you use the code free ship. And I always go straight for the clear section. All right. And I saw this. This is the Tarte, C A R T E. And my mother insisted it's pronounced Tarte. But no, I think it is Tarte. It says High Performance Naturals. And it is a what they call rainbow palette and a mascara. And it says Jesse Page X Tart. Jesse Page is an actress, author, and YouTube creator who's an advocate for self love and confidence and celebration of pride. She's partnered with Tart to bring awareness to important LGBTQ issues and support her favorite organizations like the Trevor Project. Okay, so this is the box. This is an idea of what the colors are. Very nice. I like the gold. And, oh, I wish you could smell what I could smell. There is bacon frying in the background. And let me show off some of my shirt here. 
This is an old his tour shirt from the Animal Eyes tour. Okay, I'm reading this in resting in the middle of the weeds in Secaucus. I would like to be smoking a whole lot of weed in Secaucus or wherever the hell. Um, so this is what the palette looks like. And as you can see, it's a bit bigger than a deck of cards. Uh, and it comes with a plastic thing to protect it. And it says, let it rain, bow. Now, the first thing I noticed when looking at it is the colors are very beautiful. But it's missing a true green. So if you were looking for a palette where you can make a complete rainbow from it, I'm sorry. But this is not it. That said, I think that this is a very useful palette because for travel because it's obviously nice and small. But I also like that if you are into color matching, there are some colors here that I think will be useful for an outfit that I have. And part of the reason why I have these uh, outfits hanging up behind me is that I like to do a lot of wardrobe planning. And when I'm unable to film, I'm still working on things like wardrobe for things coming up. Now, COVID, I'm not able to do much in the way of events. Well, there's no events at all because everybody with any like a sense is in quarantine, except for the lucky people who get to come to my town to go on vacations and things. And they are able to do so safely because they're going to hotel rooms and stuff like that. But I'm pretty much just staying close to home and trying to be as safe as possible. But I want to show you something about this particular palette here and some of the colors in it. The top and the middle color of this palette, I think, would look really good with this outfit I'm showing you here. Now, with this, the skirt's a little green for this top, but I've been looking for something for this top, and I have the perfect jewelry for it. And even though this is a spring outfit, I'd be willing to work it, to wear it anytime between now and spring, frankly. Uh, even if it's uh, the weather ha would happen to be inclement in a couple of blocks, I can be in any safe casino where climate is no, it's not relevant. And for that matter, if I wanted to, I could just put my uh, outerwear in coat check and just walking around in some of the casinos are attached to each other, so you don't really need to be outside in the elements if that's what I want to do. Anyway, to get back to this palette, uh, most of these are shimmers, but not all of them. Um, ironically enough, I would I think I would like one of the other purples better if it had more shimmer to it. And now, when I'm looking at the computer monitor, it looks like the bottom one is blue, and it's a shade of purple. And it's really annoying how you can get purple things that show up as blue. And I'm going to interrupt the subject of this to show you what I mean. Give me a second. All right. Okay. I'm about to show you a purple and black zebra stripe pillowcase. Now, what does it look like on camera? Doesn't it look blue? This is not blue. This is purple. This really pisses me off. Unless a person is able to get the fancy programs that do editing of color into the seven spectrum parts on video. I mean, editing on a still picture is one thing, but editing on video is a real pain in the backside. So anyway, I really don't like it when the color is misrepresented. So that said, I got this and I believe it was $10. And for the fact that it is so lightweight and I like the red. Matter of fact, I, I'll even swatch them for you. I'm trying to get close to the window so that I can get good light. You know what? Actually, I know what I'll do for. Well, I'll get a few other things in my hand or not in my hand but if I have everything on me then I won't need to come back here and that's the thing is that I'm never able to be that prepared 
especially when some of what I need is little and probably fell through. Oops. And I don't want this to fall down. That would really try change the tone of this video real quickly. Yeah. I don't know why. There's one thing I can't seem to find. My intent was going to be to carry this on to another room. Um, but if I cannot find one of the eyeshadows, then that kind of is going to affect things. I don't want to say it's going to ruin things because I don't want to have that attitude. Uh, I can't attach this to another video because I'm using a Chromebook. So, um, and I am doing this as a live stream, even though the great majority of you are going to be watching this as a rebroadcast at your own convenience. What I'm looking for right now is another piece of makeup that I got on my Sephora order which is actually, I really don't want to do this video without that eyeshadow because it is really stunning. Uh, you know what? Oops. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. What you don't see is I have some boxes that have jewelry in it. I have been packing and one of the box sizes I've been finding very useful are these little pink boxes that you can get from companies like ColourPop. Uh, you can get similar colors from uh, Sephora also. And just hold on to them when you're getting ready to pack. And I have been using them to organize some of the jewelry that I have had to take down from how I had had it displayed. Uh, hi, Gypsy. How are you doing? Um, you know, I've been trying to type something on my address bar, and I don't know what the problem was. Yeah, when I, when I try typing, for some reason, the cursor doesn't activate. That is really annoying. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys something else from that order. And I know that you they say packaging is wasteful, but I'm a sucker for special dramatic packaging, and I don't think I could ever throw this out. This is from Kat Von D, KVD, Kat Von D, Vegan Beauty. Uh, she is, first of all, I got to tell you, I think that she is a absolutely stunning, beautiful woman. And it was definitely, she did a very great service to the world by having a makeup line that involved a foundation and concealer that is opaque enough that it could actually cover somebody's tattoos. That is good for anybody that wants a very, very opaque makeup. They have the scars they need to hide or whatever. Uh, so she really did help the world. Uh, probably one of the best contenders to the Derma Blend series for covering up things or the it cosmetics which is really really good quality but it's extremely expensive uh, but just take a look at this packaging i'm going to get back up against my window I, I want you to see the hologram effect this says alchemist holographic palette okay uh, i'm going to take it out of the box i just heard the sound of a little box fall down. Uh, no, that's not what I was hoping it would be. Okay, the Alchemist Holographic Palette. Face and High Eye Highlighter Palette. And it's a beautiful bar relief. I'm putting my hand on it. It's smooth and you could feel the A in the intricate Gothic scroll work. It's really beautiful. I don't know if you could see this. I really want you to see this. Kind of got that rainbow. Texas, wow. Oh, man. Uh, you know, I have um, 
a cousin that lives in Grapevine, Texas. For a while there, she lived near Waco, uh, but way, way after the Branch Davidian stuff. Um, I've been told Austin, Texas is really amazing place. I love bats, and I really would like to spend some time watching bats on the con underneath the Congress Avenue Bridge. Uh, and there are certain laws that Texas has that I really respect. And when I finally get my bus and I make it into that uh, house on wheels with my cats and all that stuff, I plan on spending some time in Texas. Uh, but that's not going to be, that's going to be a few years up down the road. Anyway, uh, I'm sure I could find odd jobs and, and have a really great time. And uh, the food I heard was can really be amazing. So you open this up and you see have a triangle shaped mirror and these I saw them what they showed you on the computer didn't do a, uh, it justice. These colors this is it says green emerald. This says ultraviolet amethyst. This says blue sapphire. This says pink opal, and I, I'm going to go ahead and try to swatch these, but I don't know if this would really show up. This is the green emerald. This is the pink. Uh, no, it says ultraviolet amethyst. Excuse me. Now, this is the blue sapphire. Now this is the pink opal. I don't know. If... I'm still mad that I can't find the this one other thing I got in the order. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that I could find a place that I could do odd jobs in Texas. I was even thinking when George W. Bush had his ranch in Midland, I'm thinking I, at the time I would, I would have been willing to get vetted and volunteer even as a ranch hand to go shovel shit and, and shovel those 80-pound hay bales. I know how heavy a hay bale can be. Uh, and get to, I've never been around horses. I, I really enjoy by horses and I would like to have hung out with him for even a couple hours and just talk about life and certain things that he and I have in common and stuff and uh, but anyway he's not president anymore and but it's still it's nice to dream so another thing that I got is I've been looking for proof eyeliner and this is from the Sephora collection it says colorful eyeliner waterproof and, it, and the color is actually going to break the seal and get this. And I hope it really is waterproof. Because, oh, countryside. You know, I have been, friends of mine who have been following the saga of my dealing with the terrible urban hell that I live in and how maybe I should consider country life, I'm thinking if I could get away with living in my bus house, uh, there's things I'm going to have to find out about that may or may not be legal, such as can you, without spinning an arm and a leg, can you make a safe room in your bus house that actually can involve a gun safe so that you can actually not violate any laws? Because from what I understand is that you can't have, you can't, no, and, and I'm in New Jersey where this, this stuff is against the law anyway. If you're not a cop and I'm not a cop, you just can't carry. But I'm just saying, is what if your home was a vehicle? Hi, Andrea. Hi. Um, I hope you guys don't mind my rambling. But this is an opportunity for me to talk about things that really do matter and let you guys know that I am alive. And, you know, and yeah, if I happen to be talking about the makeup shit, well, that's something else. Anyway... If, say, you have a safe room in your special uh, souped-up Winnebago that was originally a, ha a school bus, right? And say you don't have any roommates or anything except your two cats. 
and you obviously don't drink alcohol and you obviously don't do hard drugs anymore except for cannabis, you know, and that's becoming increasingly legal. But let's just say that you ran out and you don't have any on you. Okay. And let's say that you are going through, I know you can't carry even accidentally uh, from one state to another, because even though you may have go through a state where it's totally legal, you can, and you may have a carry permit for that state. They are not transferable to other states, other states, some states will not honor them. State of New Jersey, for instance, you're shit out of luck. If you have a, a new uh, Pennsylvania gun card and you get caught, here, uh, they can really fuck your life up. So please uh, go on the NRA site and learn your laws. Don't get caught transporting stuff. That's, that scares more people who would otherwise want to avail themselves of the training and the uh, self-defense classes and whatever. But you, if you're smart, you're going to want to learn the laws and you don't want to in any way be a foul of them. But if you're going to be living kind of on the road, how do you keep from getting in trouble when you trans? transfer across state lines you know that's the thing so anyway but i don't have the bus yet so i don't shouldn't even have to think about it but i am thinking about it but you guys want to see what this color is right this is i'm shaking it first and uh, i'm gonna set this down somewhere where it hopefully won't get knocked over and i'm gonna go back up against the wall oh, and oh this is where a third hand would really come in handy uh i don't know how i'm gonna do this Okay, I'm going to go back up. I'm, I'm near the window, by the way. And I'm going to put this. I'm doing two lines. Uh, lines. Gee, I shouldn't talk like that. Don't do those things anymore. Ha uh ha. -huh. I made it drug funny. Okay. Uh, so this is a obvious blue. And I'm not disappointed. And if that other so-called blue mascara really is waterproof that I got on Wish. Um, that would be great if it really is waterproof. Uh, I was hoping it would be here. I could show you as a reminder of what I had gotten. But what I really want to show you is that other thing. Uh, oh yeah, there was something else on here that came with this that I want to show you. That's probably where that other damn eyeshadow is. Now, I ran out of my way to make sure that I would have all of my props before I went to film. Um, my mother may get to do a cameo on this. There's water on for pasta. And I think she's becoming a little less uptight about the being on camera kind of thing. But she knows that we have to dye her hair and we have to cut it again. And, uh, you know, she's the first to complain if she feels long hairs and she needs a trim and stuff. And even though she's glad that she's not going to have a doctor's appointment for at least a month. So that's less reasons for her to feel that she needs to want to look her best, even though I'm sure she's going to want to have things on to do videos with me. But that's the thing is the things that she needs are the things I'm going to want to use her on video for. So, uh, without making her feel that I'm using her, even though she knows it's, I guess exploit is the right word. I mean, wouldn't you, if you were in my shoes and you had a mother and you loved her, uh, especially if your mom was getting old and you thought that she really, you wanted to document times with her. Oh, you like this? Okay, I'm going to show you the eyeshadow that I'm wearing. Uh, let me talk about that without revealing as much of my lack of good housekeeping habits, you know. Uh, I actually use the only colors in this eyeshadow palette that I even like. I really hate it when I plunk down money. Sometimes these companies are these high-end companies, and I find out that there's only, like, two colors I like in the whole palette. 
and this shit is not cheap, you know? Um, I'm looking on my bed. My bed has piles of makeup on it. This is ridiculous. I mean, bum squatting in the street don't live like this. Well, actually, bum squatting in the street probably do live like this. Uh, why is it so hard for me to fucking find this eyeshadow palette? And the thing is, I took a lot of things out of boxes so that I could use the boxes for packing things in. You know? I found out that some of these eyeshadow boxes are really good for jewelry. And I have been just... There's even a chance that we can find a vacancy to move in the next couple of months. That would be so nice. Yeah, that's the thing is, I am sorry. I, sometimes I miss my mother already, okay? And my mother is 79. You guys probably know. And, uh, yeah. I, I'm trying to find this other eyeshadow thing, or at least that palette. And I know it's around here, but I want to sneak up on her. Shh. Oh, bacon. Oh, cabbage is in there, too. That's it's good. Onions got salt. Cabbage Don't I need to boil it? Uh, what about the water for the pasta? I just turn it on. Oh, okay. Oh, so leather, I'll, come oh. on. Um, we're, they know I'm live streaming. So, anyway, and I told you not to be surprised. Well, you're going to need me to turn the water well, when the water needs to be done, I'll get it. Okay, do uh, you want to see some bacon? Any of you infidels that do not approve, this is a house that we eat pork. We eat bacon, okay? No infidels here. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, you want to see some of my garden plants? There's so many things that I wanted to show you in this garden series. Uh, but in this thing, you see these leaves here? This is some kind of squash. I think this might be a uh, cucumber. I'm not sure. But these things and some of the, whoops. So most of these are tomato plants. And the flowering has started. But the tomato plants that are actually in the garden across the street. Uh, oh, you want to see flowers? Oh, this is falling down. See the flowers? Uh, there are flowers. Oh, you see. Uh, I don't keep that in the window because I don't want problems, but uh, there is a Jeff Andrew and Women for Trump sign, but that usually I keep that on because I don't want to attract attention of the drug dealers, but this is the uh, vine for the uh, squash. You can see how it's snaking down here and all most of these pots are kind of stuck together because the tendrils from the lentil plants, and these are lentils here, they get these curly cue things and they also get stuck with the tendrils that are in the squash plant. So since the squash is winding around, it's attached to so many of the other plants. Uh, and I know I mentioned this before, but lentils are really good to grow in the base of other plants, just like clover is, because they both fix nitrogen into the soil. They're really good for plants' soil. It's a way of for feeding the soil. If you're an organic gardener, you don't have to buy those chemicals and stuff. Pork and makeup, yes. Um, I, for some reason, I don't know why it's hard for me to type and everything, uh, but this is, I have, I'm so proud of myself that during the effort to pack, this room is kind of used as a storage room. God help if a person ever actually lived here as a bedroom. This You hear so much of the ghetto noise and the bullshit here. But I had these big piles of clothes in the corner here in clear plastic bags. 
And I wanted to just finally organize things into categories because I really can't hang up anything more in my bedroom because the pole is metal and it just can't take the weight. Then here is, uh, this was the family coat closet. Well, at least for my mother and me, my brother, he has all his own stuff is at the end. But anyway, this at least is a wooden pole. But yeah, but the other one's wooden uh, to, ooh, in my room and wood, when it gets too heavy, it snaps. But anyway, I started having some of these things snap. These things would, the weight would be too heavy, especially the newer version, which I will show you. I will show you what the newer version is. It's this kind that, you see how they're supposed to be one on the bottom? Hello, various vinyl. That's Jeff. Hello, how you doing? Uh, you see how one one part breaks, and so I use it upside down. And finally, I'm saying I'm tired of having piles of my clothes fall on my floor. It fucking pisses me off. So anyway, I have been some things like dresses that are of a formal occasion. I have put in a big uh, zip, uh, a big garment bag. Uh, then there's the things that are long and black that are like funeral stuff. That's all put together. Uh, things that, see, when you live in a seaside resort, packing and unpacking for seasonal things is really tricky because most people think, okay, the season's getting colder now. Why don't you put all this summer stuff away? But when you live in a place where you have nightclubs and things, you have casinos, they have been open. Uh, the clubs and the dancing, that's probably going to be one of the last things to open up in LA. There are reasons to not put all that stuff away. So it's not so easy uh, to just hang up uh, your uh, long sleeve stuff. But while I'm talking about long sleeve stuff, there's some things that I really love. Now, now, one of the things I'm nervous about, yeah. All right, let's talk about some t-shirts, shall we? Without looking old in the process. This is a very, very, very special shirt for me. This is from the Kiss Animalized Tour, okay? Unfortunately, it doesn't look good on me because it's made for a larger person. But can you read what it says on the back? Okay. Well, the shirt that I was almost going to wear, I, I knew, I, I actually put all my kiss shirts, well, not all my kiss shirts, but most of them I put in this one bag so that I would have something to grab them. And, uh, and I decided to use, uh, this was a pillowcase that the zipper broke on it, but it was a way to just organize things that I couldn't handle the weight of putting all these stuff on hangers and putting them in my closet. That's the whole thing is that my closet uh, things are too heavy. And usually my kiss tour shirts, I always hung them up. I always took very good care of them. There's some, a few of them have autographs on them. One of them actually went through a lot of really interesting family drama because my brother and I were having a really hard time. And one of them, my brother actually, I caught him defacing an Eric Singer autographed shirt, but I'll show you that in a minute. But anyway, this is another very, very, very special shirt. This has, this is a case. I will have a shirt that I didn't get at the event, but I got it later at. But the thing is, if I tell you the story, you guys are going to think that I'm old and then it will just fuck up my life and my career. A, uh, oh, oh, what's her name? Uh, Jessica Stone, not Barbara Stone. Oh, the one in Basic Instinct. Uh, she was saying that the women of an age, and I won't say between the ages what it is, but supposedly in Hollywood, once you hit that age group, the work just totally stops. And I hate to say that she's right, but she, ladies, right? Which is fucked up because it shouldn't matter what your age is. It should be mattering. Do you look good enough to do the work? Bottom line, especially if you've got the cute little body and everything, you could do whatever, you should be able to get to work. But anyway, I digress. Anyway, this shirt here, I didn't get when I went to this, but I was actually in extra in Crazy Crazy Nights video. Uh, it was at the Olympic Auditorium in Hollywood, which was actually technically West LA at the time, not too far from where OJ Simpson had his little drama. Uh, I still had my little sports car then, and I got to hang out with Eric Carr, the Kiss drummer afterward. But anyway, this sh shirt reminds me of a very, very special time, and that could be its own story time because uh, getting 
to be an extra in a movie uh, or in rather a rock video. And even though nobody got paid, they were smart. Uh, uh, no, I'm having, hey, Abraham, fellow arts is Abraham. Hello, how are you doing? It's, I'm getting a, a, a error message here saying your connection is unstable. Please wait while we try reconnecting. I hope they're not fucking with my system. So, my system here. Oh, uh, gosh. Um, anyway, uh, I ended up getting pulled up on stage by Gene Simmons. I was a bleach blonde at the time. And uh, I, I was writing in my journals uh, something that I really kind of missed doing. But for I was doing that very consistently when I lived in Los Angeles and when I lived in San Francisco and all that stuff when I was on tour with the Grateful Dead and blah, blah, blah. And when I was working in films and television and I was a stage dancer and all that, yeah, I can look on uh, in notebooks and I can say, oh, yeah, I did that. So assuming that my I could read my chicken scratch handwriting, which is another story. Anyway, uh, I got to hang out while the crew was hanging around, taking down the video set. I got to blend in with the other people, partly because I was still bleach blonde then, partly because I was writing in my journal. And I basically... What I told everybody was I was working on a story about blah, blah, blah. And I just neglected to tell people that the story was in my own diary. Um, but I got to hang out and I figured that the band was gone pretty long time. And what ended up happening was Eric Carr, Kiss's drummer, he was still there. Uh, I'm going to, see, I don't want to ruin the story time. This is going to be a story time. I, I guess I can tease you with it. I got to they they had comics in between takes they had comics comedians entertaining the crowd and sometimes they would give you a pass so that you can go get yourself a soda or something if you were thirsty because you're hanging out for hours and hours you're gonna get thirsty you know and a couple of times i was able to get a soda or something and eventually when i was uh, backstage availing myself of craft service i got to run into eric carr the drummer of kiss and well, sometime I'll tell you about that. Um, but it's not anything scandalous. He was a total gentleman. But, uh, yeah, you're eating a fig. We have bags of dried figs, Jeff. But you know what? I My favorite dried fruit. Oh, God, what, what a weird live stream. This is my favorite dried fruit. I discovered dried cherries, tart cherries. They are amazing. Make sure that you, they say that they... They're mechanically, they take the pits out. They usually say that, be careful, there just might be one, but I've never had any pits in them. But tart cherries are the most amazing thing. And the great thing is that they taste really good the way prunes do, but you don't have, they don't have any laxative effects. You can eat them like chocolate. You can have a bag of them next to you in bed watching TV and you can mindlessly eat them and they won't hurt you. And I'm sure they're loaded with, with vitamin C and antioxidants and things. They're just the best thing. And also... Dr. Oz, I was watching him one time years ago, and he was saying how tart cherry juice might help if you have problems with insomnia. Drink that just before going to bed, and it's supposed to help you. Well, I would imagine that eating cherries, tart cherries, before going to bed might help you with insomnia, but they're just so good. They might be addictive. I had a couple of pounds of them, and they were so good. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this uh, I have three still pictures that were slides. And we actually made pictures of them because, you know, with the slide, you can use a, them as a negative and you can make prints. A uh, photographer had given me copies of three shots of the process of my being pulled on stage by Gene Simmons. Uh, I was hanging out backstage at a Y&T concert. Y&T was opening up for Fraley's Comet at the Olympic, not at the Olympic Auditorium, at the uh, uh, oh, Wiltern Theater. Okay. And this is on... Uh, well, the Wiltern Theater. I believe that's on Wilshire, and I forget what the cross street is because it's been a few years since I've lived in Los Angeles, and uh, if I told you the year was like 1987 or maybe 1988, then you think I was old, so I'm going to shut the fuck up now. So, but anyway, yeah. Uh, so, I found this some years later, and you can see it has been through, I don't know what kind of hell. I was always like this when I got it, but it has sentimental value for me. And, uh, oh, this says 1988. It was crazy, crazy nights. And I remember, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the Rainbow Bar and Grill. 
uh, Wednesdays was a really great day to go to the Rainbow Bar and Grill because a lot of these musicians that were in town working on records and stuff, they would go on Wednesday was like their weekend. And I'm thinking, okay, there's Eric Carr there. How do I talk to him and chat him up without him thinking I'm just some groupie, right? Because I'm dressed all the same like I, way I dress now, uh, like all slutty and stuff, except to throw in high heels and mix and throw in really big hair. And I, you know, I really have not progressed since then. So I asked him a question about United States copyright law as it was then. Now, think of how complicated copyright law is now with the Internet and stuff and with things like fair use, different ways that people can legitimately use your uh, your created work and in, in ways that you can uh, talk about other people's created work and sometimes use parts of their created work. And that's something I generally try not to use people's stuff because uh, the less you get involved with other people's stuff the safer you are anyway but anyway i asked him something about uh copyright law at the time i th i saw myself career-wise as maybe doing something involving writing i was a stage dancer at the time and at the time i was actually sleeping in my car and it was the last thing i wanted the people on the scene to know that i was doing that i was part or driving around till I could find a deserted parking lot and then covering the windshield with some kind of reflective whatever bullshit you know and curling up, I had the kind of uh, sports car. It was the Dodge Daytona Turbo Z with the, the bucket seats. Uh, yeah, you catch the, the uh, rebroadcast this. Um, but I used to curl up at the end of the night when, uh, and I would have died of embarrassment if any of those people I was rubbing elbows with in clubs knew that I was uh, sleeping in my car and stuff. And um, that's the thing is that then it was really. You know, I always made it a point to not mix my scenes as much as possible. But the thing is, it was much easier to do that before the Internet. You know, in Los Angeles, as small a world as it was for some scenes, if when you're in different kinds of scenes, you try not to get caught, you know. So uh, anyway, I wanted to actually show you something. First of all, one of the things I'm concerned about in this room, because it's my grill room, I'm afraid of the sunlight fading these clothes, but I have some uh, plaid shirts that I really am fond of. And this, of course, is really interesting because it has a lot of air conditioning in it. But that's the thing. Is some of these things are more decorative and less practical as far as when you really need to keep warm. And this I've worn out for... Uh, birthday dinners and that's another thing is that i have been planning out wardrobe and so with that thought in mind act my oh you know what while i'm showing vehicle living yeah i'm I, I was really thinking about getting a jitney and living in it but the more i looked at them they're not much bigger than my bedroom and if i don't have enough room in my bedroom for my clothes and most people living in vehicles, they're totally downsizing and they're down to like six pairs of jeans or whatever. And I can't downsize with my clothes. I can't do it. But anyway, I wanted to show you guys something. This is a his shirt that's lost some of the sequins, but I found out that it still has the base for even the missing sequins. So all I have to do is find the sequins that are probably a bunch of them are in my bed and, and, and bags of clothes and stuff. And I have glue. And the Gorilla Glue that we bought a couple years ago is now all dried out and is really crappy. And I'm going to have to contact the manufacturer and hopefully get a refund because when you actually go and break down and get a, a name brand, something because it's supposed to be state-of-the-art, the best, and you're throwing good money for something that's supposed to be good and it's disappointing. So that really fucked up. Anyway, here's another special Kiss shirt. This is from... Right around the time when I got clean, my clean, I mean chemicals, you know, stuff like that. And this says rock and roll all night party every day. This is from the Kiss box set, November 20th, 2001. So, uh, and it was, they had a meet and greet in the parking lot of the Tower Records on the Sunset Strip. And it was uh, Jean, Paul, and who was in the band at the time, Eric Singer and, I guess, Bruce Kulick. Was Bruce Kulick or was it Tommy Thayer? No, I think it was Tommy Thayer. Uh, yeah, I I love 
I love the different colored plaid shirts. I really do. Uh, I hope I, you guys don't think that I'm bragging about my wardrobe and stuff. That's not my intention. I mean, some of the shit that I'm showing you is like 20 some years old. Okay. Some of the stuff I got, a lot of the stuff I got used or some of the stuff were the hand-me-downs from my mother. There's not a whole, whole lot of things that actually I paid top dollar for, but this shirt here, I did buy at a Hawthorne Heights concert. It was the only shirt that they had that actually was my size. It was, this is a youth size. And I love the way it fits. It's kind of an ugly shirt, but it's kind of cool at the same time. And if you never heard of the band Hawthorne Heights, um, I've actually only heard two records. One of them is uh, the album called If Only You Were Lonely. And the other one is I've only heard a couple of tracks from it, but they are they reminded me of a young Def Leppard. Oh, I want to bring all... Oh, I'm gonna get yelled at again. Oops. Ooh, I almost fell. Okay, all right, all right. Hello, you two. Okay, I wanted to show you guys something else. See, she's becoming a lot less uptight about this thing. And uh Oh, what do, you, what do you guys think of my not bothering to keep my hair down? I was going to take it down, but I thought, you know what? I'm just keeping it up for for right now anyway. Uh, here, I want to show you what I got in combination of Yves Rocher and Avon. One of my mother's good friends gave her... And me a bunch of stuff. And I could kind of tell what was intended for my mother and what was intended for me. So let's get closer to back. See, that's the thing is if I come back here, I don't have something that I can put this on. I don't have... Uh, I could. Here's what I'll do. I'll grab my stand-up desk. Yeah, my storage... Is across the court, the street from the Capitol Records building. It's called Hollywood Bowl Self Storage, and it has these paintings. It goes. It's where the entrance to the 101 freeway is, and you see this painting that shows if it's still there. Even it shows uh, John Wayne, and it has some biblical verse and something about on the wings of eagles. And I'm going to put the stand up desk so that I can take advantage of the light. Yes, I do have stories. Um, unfortunately, the more stories I tell, the men think, oh, shit, this, this chick really gotten around. And it just, but they are interesting and they're real, you know. And I'm grateful that I have the memory, but I have the journals to prove it. So that's the thing is, I want to make sure. If I'm going to die, and I know everybody's going to die, I want to make sure that the journals end up with somebody that will preserve them and that I don't just become forgotten in case that my ship doesn't come in. But I'm planning on my ship coming in because I have so many things. When I rediscovered poetry that I've been writing for years and I've been working with that, and I have a book full of song ideas, and there's so many things that I want to do. And But I think that most of that I can do in Los Angeles, but maybe even Nashville too, but the thing is this COVID, you know, it's fucking things up right now. But just thinking about what I can do in the vehicle, but downsizing enough so that I could fit my crap into a vehicle. That's, but anyway, enough about that. So this, uh, this is the Color Trend Powder Eyeshadow Single. And the color, it says Blue Ice. And this is a nice. Now, I hope you don't hear anything in the background. I actually found that there is a video playing very quietly in the background. That's actually part of one of my day job tasks. Since I finally have home internet, well, all that time that I had the internet shut off, I wasn't able to work at all. And it really, it didn't cost me a lot of money because I was only making pennies, but still the whole idea that they shut off something 
thing that's keeping you from having, you know, they're messing with your means to income is really pissing me off. But anyway, when I found out by accident, by the way, that the internet was on. Okay, this is what this, I'll put it on here. See, it looks very, very white, but when the light hits it, it's got that blue kind of look. So anyway, I have storages in the Hollywood Bowl self-storage, and it's right across from Capitol Records. Now, interesting factoid about that area. They decided it has changed so much since when I lived in Hollywood. Now they have this, I don't know if it's totally finished construction or whether it's still being worked on, but they are having a 30-some, if not 40-story skyscraper on the corner of Hollywood and Vine, very close to the Capitol Records building. And shortly after they started uh, work on it, they found out that a big fault intersects right there. So you, let's get this right. You know you're in earthquake country. And so you're going to have a skyscraper up where the San Andreas Fault connects with whatever the hell it connects with. If it's not San Andreas, it's another fault. Now, I've been through earthquakes before. And they are interesting. They are definitely, from a scientific standpoint, they are very fascinating. But they're, it's kind of like when you're a passenger in a, a car or a plane or something. You are not the one that's in control. And I know this sounds like a cliche, but you really don't know how long it's going to last and you don't know how hard it's going to be. And it can go from interesting to terrifying really quickly. And time has a way of extending and playing with you and what seems like it's much longer than it actually is. And if it is a lot, as long as a minute, it is a very long minute. It's not just a minute. It's, uh, it can be really, really scary. So, and the higher you are, the more you would feel the swaying. I've been on as high as a fourth floor in Hollywood. and uh, But I can't even imagine being up in a skyscraper and, and them having earthquakes there. And it's so ridiculous. And, and I can tell you, I can go on and on about how unaffordable it is in Los Angeles. And yet there are people that are still attracted to the area because they need to be there because of industry. And of course, the weather is beautiful and your access to health care is really a great advantage of living in Southern California. I can tell you that from a personal standpoint. But on the negative, things have changed in that it's gotten even harder to be uh, harder to afford. And the political unrest, it is really unacceptable. And especially if you're a person like myself that is not particularly shy about her political views, then you have to worry about Antifa and uh, Black Lives Matter type people threatening you and stuff. And it's like I already kind of figured out that I would not feel comfortable with just blatantly walking around wearing my Trump shirts indiscriminately like I do on the East Coast. Like I feel that everybody should feel comfortable wearing whatever the fuck they want. I'm not tripped out when I see if I saw somebody wearing a Biden shirt. I, you know, whatever, more power to you. I see people wearing Obama stuff around here. You know, for a while, there are dollar stores that are selling a lot of Obama hats and stuff. I'm looking to see if the um, dealers and stuff are over there because I have one, I have the window open up, uh, I have the barrier taken away from the window to allow more light in. Uh, I, my first earthquake, uh, I'd been out there almost a year. You see, now, I'm, if I talk about this now, it's going to ruin story times. I could tell you stuff about, well, so I won't ruin that. But there was another earthquake where I was flying on LSD. And the thing is, what now? Okay, and this is again, what would you do if you were me? I was living with a whole bunch of people in a one-bedroom apartment, and uh, I was very happy that somebody had given me a place to live. However, the ex free rent was very, very expensive, but this is a person who was sweet-talking me into uh, donating money to him so that he could do nefarious uh, regulating activities, and he was this so-called Vietnam vet, but... Uh, uh, well, you know, the, the taxes are ridiculous. The only thing that, that it's good, it's good if you know that you're going to be homeless because it probably can be fun. And I know that sounds really cavalier, but I think I can talk about being homeless because I've been there and I'm not saying that it was always a fun experience because that's a lie. And now I'm looking at through the lens of being clean and sober off of drugs and alcohol and only having the marijuana, which I do enjoy. 
And it's great that marijuana is legal there. And I think it will be fun to be there with it being legal. But that said, if you fall into any kind of money or say you win money in a game show, then would taxes or take out so much if you're a resident there? And if I had a game show, I would have shows in the time when I was really thinking that, that would be a place to have business or in Nevada, close to the Cal Colorado, uh, Nevada, close to the California border so that you can avoid sales tax. But then again, you have to cross uh, a desert to be around all the fun stuff, you know. And I'm not saying that there can't be fun things in Las Vegas. And I used to really enjoy it. I had, I could, again, that would be another story time about having a really bad BF that liked to play craps with the rent money. But fortunately, he usually won. But now I'm getting another thing saying my connection is unstable. Please wait while we try reconnecting. I hope you guys can still hear me. But anyway, I grew to appreciate Las Vegas. I used to go to Vegas when the food was reasonably cheap. Because when the, the more the mafia was in control, the cheaper the food was. The cleaner it was with the crime and the mafia and stuff, They uh, that's when the food prices started going up. Because it used to be they figured that since you had to make an effort to get to Vegas, they could give you cheap food. That way you could gamble with the rest. Oh, I think. I, yes, I heard you. What? Got to drain the water? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's time for me to drain the water. Yes, there he is. There's all, excuse me. Sure, there will be. Yes. Okay. Now, I have to drain the water. And see, she's like, I don't want to be showing on this. Okay. Pasta water. No. Here. Last time. This wasn't even shown. Oh. Usually I save some of this pasta water, but it's not for a pasta sauce. What this is, is my mother uh, saute, uh, uh, what the hell did she saute? She sauteed cabbage in uh, bacon. So, and apparently what you do is you mix the egg noodles with the uh, bacon and cabbage. And see, al dente pasta. Nothing worse than overcooked pasta. And on the top of the stove, it was, it was looking scummy. Okay. I'm going to try not to get yelled at. Okay, I dumped it. Where the hell? Oops, she's not even in there. All right. Okay, I dumped it. Thank you. All right. You've seen this cat, right? Oops. I don't think it would have been appropriate if I had ambushed her and she was coming out of the bathroom. That's not a waste. But I am going I am going to open up this door. So there's more things that I wanted to show you as I'm rambling on. So okay, that was cool as far as makeup goes. And also she had a whole little Ziploc baggies. Saw the Heaven 88. Yeah. Uh, I walked away. I got clean and sober off of the chemicals November 19th, 2001. Okay. Um, right after I got to see Meteor Shower. And that's going to be a, a, a uh, story time. So anyway, uh, there was a uh, Ziploc baggie full of mascaras. Uh, for some reason, I took the one brown Beyond Color Lash Fortifying Mascara. Uh, let me tell you something about brown mascara. Brown mascara with most eyeshadows will mute things and blot things out and make things so neutral. I really do not recommend it. The one exception I would make is if you're wearing only gold and brown and neutral eyeshadows, then that won't hurt it. But if it's anything bright and decent and pretty, forget it. Uh, I shouldn't have taken it. I should have just let my mother take it. 
this one here it still has a seal on it it says avon astonishing lengths which i remember that was a pretty good mascara it's got doesn't have a real big brush but it seemed to do a good balance between not getting all clumpy and leaving a whole bunch of mascara on the bottom and not getting on top so i i thought that was nice uh, so now another thing that was sent was two of these these are from the avon and new it says finally a painless way to inject youth a new clinical uh line and wrinkle corrector uh for one week what free now full size available in brochure too so this is what it looks like in the box this is what it looked like the first one when i found it i opened it up and as you can see it's separated there's like a pancake syrup kind of thing and a little bit of a blob uh one of my favorite drugstore mascaras, I really like the uh, L'Oreal Telescopic. I like that. Hold, a th hold that thought. All right. Speaking of my favorite drugstore mascara. Now, I really don't want to be plugging L'Oreal because I really don't like their politics lately, just trying to talk down to people and say that we are donating money to these organizations and we encourage you to do that and trying to guilt trip some of us because of our cultural heritage, even though we cannot control what our cultural makeup is. We should not be uh, intimidated into apologizing for that. I'm looking for something here. Uh. Um, all right. I really wanted to show you the craft. All right, you guys, this is really driving me crazy. Um, that's why I've been making purchases on Wish.com, dealing with companies who I really have not been familiar with prior to these past couple of years. If you're going to go and have an open letter in these fashion magazines, I get a lot of fashion magazines because, you know, there are companies where you can tell it surveys and you can get magazines. Uh, I'm getting, uh, God, what else are we getting? A People magazine. And so much of the advertising is all talking down to white people. They're saying they're going to make things more inclusive. And they're saying, that okay, that advertising should represent the people that are watching. So if... And I agree that, yes, people who have been from uh, stereotypically under-promoted cultures need representation and they deserve representation, okay? Great for bringing on the black supermodels and whatever and in the print advertising and stuff. I support that. Same thing with people of all different body types and things. I agree with that. Let's see all kinds of body types because the world is full of all kinds of people. I support you. Same with... Uh, uh, whether you are stuck in a wheelchair or your combination of uh, cultures or whatever. Yes, representation matters. I agree with that. But when you decide to go so far in the other direction that I, as a white person, look at a magazine that I've read for years, and all of a sudden I'm seeing that they're more like 70% of the um, people are black, and almost all the people that they're introducing us to, these new people, are people that I've never heard of, and they're... Um, just it's harder for me to find people that are like me and uh, the, the last thing to be represented are going to be people of a certain age and short models let's see that happen i mean everything else you're allowed to have but you know what if you're white they're not gonna watch 
And if Sharon Stone is right about the women being totally not wanted between ages 40 and 60 in Los Angeles in Hollywood and showbiz, and that's such bullshit because, I mean, I'm not saying that I disagree with her. I'm saying it's bullshit that there would be that going on when men, they're allowed to uh, do whatever. Uh, hold on a second. What? Dinner's ready. Oh, okay. If you'd like to view it. Okay. What, what do you mean by do? What exactly do you mean? View it, I said. Oh, view it. Oh, 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 okay. All right, so there's nothing else I need to do. Anyway, uh, no, she has a way of interrupting my train of thought. So, but hey, at least one thing, what I'm doing here, this is not rocket scientist science. I have a bunch of stuff to set aside, so I just need to show them to you. So, anyway, there's one of those in the box, one of them without. This stuff is supposed to be comparable to, yeah, that's the thing is when I, one of the things I want to do with the creative projects that I do, some music finally comes out, I want to, I know that when you're in the process of writing a song and things, sometimes you just get taken by the spirit and things become what they are and you write things however it is in the start. But when it comes to deciding on the arrangement, you can tweak the arrangement back on key to something that is more appropriate. So if, say for some reason I get some kind of funky riff to something going on, I may listen and think, and you know what, maybe I should think the rhythm of the drum that I'm imagining in this because this is veering in a direction that might not reflect really who I am, especially if I'm not going to have a band and if I'm going to do as much as possible myself, I'm going to want it to be as most authentically me as possible. And that's why I'm trying my best not to expose myself to current music or anything new or anything. I don't want something to become an earworm to me. I don't want something to accidentally uh, be something that I'm inspired by. I want something to be myself and this is why i always bring earplugs with me whenever i go shopping not that i do much because you know this pandemic and stuff. but i have to blot out i don't want to hear any of that stuff i want to not have to be exposed to any of this when i uh, uh most of the radio i listen to tends to be either classical or talk radio anyway this is what that cream should look like uh not a very appetizing color very pleasant smell I prefer my skin color, skin uh, products to be unscented, but sometimes that's just not possible. Uh, another thing from Avon that we have used some of these before, it's the Footworks Therapeutic Advanced Moisturizing Foot Cream with AHA. This is good if you've done, uh, you've taken your bath or your shower, and you've done a foot soak, and you've used one of those uh, pet things to get rid of the callus, and you put this on, and anything with H AHAs will help to get rid of some of your callousy stuff. So that's good to have, and uh, some of them, we have an older version of it that actually has an anesthetic. So if you got too rough with taking off the callus on your foot, you can use those. Another thing my mother's friend sent was to a new clinical thermofirm. This is some other wrinkle cream. And uh, full disclosure, I was an Avon lady one time. And I did it for like two or three years. And I'm telling you, my mother and I were my best customers. It was uh, during time when she was still working at Trump Taj Mahal. And trying to get people down who made orders without putting any money down first. And you're trying to chase them down. And it was, you may love makeup and stuff. You may think that you're selling things that are good. But if your job is more about how good a salesperson you are and how much of a network do you have of people who are not only interested in what you have available, but are reliable and aren't going to try to take advantage of you financially or say, yes, I want something. And then when the order's there, they're never there. And when you try calling them, they never pick up the phone. And so you shouldn't have to chase people down that owe you money. And that's the stressful thing about it. So, and another thing that I felt stressful about being an Avon lady is I would order these things at the demonstrator price. There would be like, you can get one of something to try it out and stuff. But that's the thing is that your whole order had to be of a certain minimum. And if say they had through no fault of your own. And... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I was interrupting my train of thought because I 
I was just reading what Abraham said to me, and I want to respond to that, but I want to keep on with my thought. Uh, and that totally interrupted my thought. Anyway, uh, some order, because they were sold out of some of the orders, things that you ordered, then you would end up paying higher prices than the minimum. And the thing is, that why should I be penalized? Because the company that I am ordering from uh, failed to adequately adequately determine what their demand is going to be. I can understand you want to cut it close because you don't want to have excess merchandise and have to uh, discount it too quickly. But when I order something in good faith and you all of a sudden, oh, something sold out. So I, my order is less. And so because the order is less, now I have shipping charges and different things. Now that they got me too many times for that reason. So that was unsatisfying. And also, did you know that you had to pay for the uh, uh, pamphlets, the uh, catalogs you hand out to people? You have to pay for them. And the first order that I got, the lady didn't have, uh, who was my, the person I reported to, she didn't have any in English. She had Spanish only pamphlets. No offense, I don't know words of Spanish except for a couple of cuss words, all right? I shouldn't have to have something which does not fit my culture. Um, yeah, I keep on looking over there because I feel that it, it's really obvious where. Uh, you know, having the window uncovered here, but I'm trying to give as much light as possible. Uh, so, yeah, anyway, it's Avon crap. Now, this is something, oh, here's something else from Avon. This is a nail polish, and they called it Snow Globe, and this is full of silver glitter, and this is supposed to be a, a uh, it is a top coat, and it's not very shiny, though, so, but I really very, very rarely mess with um, nail polish. This is just the Chromebook. I'm not using, I don't have the new uh, microphone plugged in. This is just this. I'm just making do with whatever equipment I have. Uh, I'm so glad that I can do this. If I had no Wi-Fi, I wouldn't be able to do this right now. This is some stuff from Yves Rocher. Uh, this is the Biospecific Nutrition Day Fluid. And this is with botanical oleosome milk. Oh, and this also comes with a tiny little bit of beauty sleep, it's called. <laughs> yeah. And this is a pamphlet information about it. And this is a nice size jar. And mm, uh, and this does look like very fluid, like a milk. But I'm sealing that real tight because the last thing I want to do is spill it. I certainly don't want to spill, spill that on there. So that is back in here. Mascara. Okay, and there's another sample. And this says Serum Vegetal Intervention. Uh, Dermo Densifying cream whatever the hell this stuff is I, it's not none of this stuff is going to get rid of the lines and the wrinkles that you have on your face trust me you put it on there even if you uh put it on top of all the other fancy stuff it's not going to help any but i think the bottom line is no matter as long as you put something on your face uh, i had to go almost a month without putting anything on because it was so hot and sweaty and everything and i did a video about that but i just felt like anything i, I put on my skin like, so I dumped motor oil on it. The only tolerate anything yucky on my face. And to me, the skincare just looked, felt yucky. Uh, okay, I'm going to cover the window because I really don't want those people to think that I'm looking out, paying attention to them because I'm really not looking for trouble. Uh, I'm, I'm figuring out the best way to deal with the neighborhood and stuff is for me to act like I'm ignorant and like I'm not aware of as much as possible. I'm going to try to not react to things, even the things that piss me off. I'm going to try to see it's it's not as easy as it is for some people I live with that seem to be able to just uh, ignore things. I am not really wired that way. But I think for my mental health, it would be good. This is something that I want you guys to see, and it's just driving me crazy. Oh, plus I never showed you the mascara that came with that thing. 
Oh. This is crazy. It's got to be here, you guys. Oh, here it is. No. Oh, here. Okay, that that rainbow looking palette came with a mascara. It says lights, camera, lashes. And this actually, the case on this is purple, even though it's filming is blue. And since my mother already opened it up to take a look at it, it is a black mascara. I'm not going to put it on my eyelashes because I already have mascara on them. Oh, by the way, the mascara that I have right now is from Too Faced. It is the Better Than Sex Mascara. All the makeup I'm wearing on my eyes, by the way, is from Too Faced. Uh, the eyeshadow is from the Christmas Star Palette. And that's why I don't understand. I deliberately set this stuff aside. Oh, here it is. 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 Okay. All right. This is the Christmas Star Palette. This is one of my least favorite makeup palettes. And I paid a pretty good price for it, even though I did get it at a discount. But they have a purple shade on here called Ornament to Be. Or ornament to be. Ha uh ha. -huh. Okay, I'm going to. And my sinuses are really acting up. Yeah, if I. The only time I get Too Faced is when they're on sale. But I was still disappointed that I got that waterproof eyeliner that turned out to not be waterproof. But I'll tell you, customer service was really, really nice to me. When I told them that how disappointed I was when I put that uh, eyeliner on, it was a better than sex waterproof eyeliner. And I shook it up real good and I put it on before doing uh, something on the boardwalk. And my eyes ran so badly and it was burning into my eyes. And I looked like uh, this total Alice Cooper reject. I mean, I talked to this very nice person on the phone and they PayPal'd me the cost of the eyeliner that was really nice of them uh i am looking for oh all right yes yeah, so this is the better than sex mascara that i'm wearing i didn't bother putting an eyeliner on uh i did use an under eye color uh okay here it is okay uh I used that purple shade, like I told you, on the crease. And uh, and then I used this pink color, really muted color. It is called Pink Ice Skate. And I used big fluffy brush. I'm trying to use this palette up to use it. Uh, If you like a really big brush on a mascara, I really recommend that Skull Mascara from Hang Fang. I showed you that before. It's got a really big brush. Nice big brush. Uh, let me find here. This, was, this is honestly better. If, you, if you're looking for a decent drugstore price mascara. Oh, I see none of these. These don't have the skull on it. But the skull mascara has a really, really, really big brush. Uh, okay. So this is called Pink Ice Skate. And see, this is a, the Christmas Star palette. It just does not rock docks. It has 
they're mostly neutrals. I was attracted by the purple, which unfortunately is that blue looking color. That is a purple. And you have to really scrub on it for it to color. Come on. It's got some highlighters and some blush shades. And a contour shade. My sinuses are really totally a wreck right now. Uh, and the highlighter, even the lightest highlighter, is not really light enough for a person who really, really, really wants something really, really, really pale. I'm just letting you know. Uh, if you're wondering what I... Oh, yeah. Uh, what did I use under my... Uh, oh, 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 oh. I'll tell you what I use under my eye. I used a gel eye color. Hold on. And it's also from Too Faced. Uh. Oh, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Oh, I'm really mad at myself. I accidentally dug at this when I was looking for something else on my bed. And I just committed makeup abuse on one of my ColourPop palettes. This is the Blue Moon palette. And these are very, very, very fragile palettes. Oh, I like Wet n Wild. Uh, I have been... I especially like shopping when, when I'm in stores. I especially like shopping around Halloween time because I noticed that they have that's the time to get black lipstick and the real vampire looking things. Um, sometimes for $2 and under. I don't know if that's still the case. But uh, I haven't been I really don't go in physical stores that much. Uh I find that I have this really annoying tendency to sometimes forget that even though the mask I'm wearing is making it hard for me to breathe, I can't just lift it and move it to the side because then all of a sudden some store employee's got to sneak up to me and say, you have to have your mask on. And I feel like a real idiot because I would never want to uh, put people in danger. Hold on a second. There. My sinuses are really, really, really. Yeah. Anyway, that's the thing about this. I got this on a discount, but I like the fact that it has a frosty white with it. And I like that it has a purple and it has a cranberry. And some of these colors are kind of pretty, but yeah, that's a that's a that's a good thing. ColourPop, I've had so many, I've had like four different palettes i would just open them up and as soon as i open up the things would just come out and i mean right onto my floor my carpet that is not a surface you want to eat off okay and and that's for that reason i can't consider any of my color pop palettes travel worthy even though i know that i am not confident enough to travel anytime soon but i still think about that that's the thing is that is totally this covid thing has me really uh say depressed and i don't want to say despondent but knowing that the travel plans are still on hold i'm looking for a tissue and you know Even if it wasn't the COVID, it's these nut jobs that are bent on getting violent with people and starting problems and destroying property and confronting people based on the other, based, you know, your political ideology and stuff. And I hate the idea of thinking I have to look over my shoulder and watch my back just because I can't have normal political expression. 
Oh, you're wondering what I use for my eyebrows. There are two of these I use interchangeably. One is from B&H Cosmetics. And the other is from Sephora. And it is a liquid lipstick. And it seems to be the closest to my hair. And it is called uh, purple, whatever the hell it is. But as you can see, it is the best thing that I can do for a color match. And it is also waterproof. If I wanted to, I could go swimming in it. The same with the Sephora one. Now, I'm one thing I noticed, if you wear these as lip colors, uh, I believe the ColourPop one may have a bit more lasting power, power under a mask than the Sephora ones. I've used both the Cheeto versions and uh, some of these just because they are the kind of lip colors that are matte and dry down and stuff doesn't mean that they're really great for wearing under masks. And then when you're cleaning your mask, I think you have to get so rough to clean it that especially if you have the real N95, which is the only kind that I have been using, uh, then I would think that if you're too rough with your mask cleaning, you can make them uh, so that they are not as effective. Okay, what, what I, you asked me about my favorite drugstore mascara, and I told you about the telescopic. This is a wand from the telescopic. I save old mascara ones. There was a mascara that I could not stand. It was from the Ulta Beauty. It was called Bold Ambition Mascara. And it was just, the applicator was this weird two-prong, two, uh, four prongs that was two scraper groove kind of things. And it was weird. It looked like on principle it might work, but it was really stupid. And it did nothing but clump on the very base of the lashes, didn't lengthen them, didn't thicken them, didn't do anything except just gave me the darker version of the short squat lashes that I already had. Okay. But when I used this ma uh, mascara application thing from the telescopic mascara, and I just stuck it into this bold ambition thing. Now, this is still, I think I've used it up or whatever. But again, that's not what I'm wearing now. I'm wearing the Better Than Sex mascara. But this is the applicator for the telescopic, L'Oreal telescopic. You can see here. Do you see? It's almost like um, a thistle. And I have so many mascara ones. And sometimes all it takes to turn a mascara that you really can't stand is to give a better. So that's, I do, I do definitely recommend you saving your applicators. So these are two similar colors again. One is from B&H Cosmetics, the other is from... I love doing color matches, but I found a mask, uh, a lipstick that is a really great match for that. Oh, but I bet I don't have it right here. Um, oh, a waterproof mascara. I'm hoping this really is waterproof. This is from Wish. And this is the waterproof curl mascara. It says 36H, 36 hours. Lengthening thick curl mascara. Again, I'm not wearing this right now. But this does seem to be waterproof. I don't know if it's as waterproof as uh, the things that you could go swimming in. I haven't given it the acid test. But uh, I... I know that when I get time emotional or I watch a video that's a tearjerker story or something or you find out that a rock star died like uh, Van Halen <clears throat> and your mascara is not running down your chin, of course I haven't been outside with it. 
that's the thing. Uh, I've really been on a, a real thing to use up stuff as much as possible. I just, I, I have some makeup that is just so old. And uh, this is a good pink. This is um, B and H Cosmetics Art Pop line of lipsticks, and this color is called, and it's a cream. It's not a frost. Oh, this is what I have underneath my eyes. This is a gel color. Or, or no, a, um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, a jelly, a jelly eye color. This used to be kind of soft and spongy and really interesting. And of course, you've got to assume that I have a really sterile hand. You know, you don't, you shouldn't be sticking dirty fingers in makeup people and I think I've gotten a little careless but you know what guess what uh, but anyway I used an eyeliner brush and I did this underneath my eye and then I used just better than sex mascara I didn't bother with uh, a black eyeliner or anything because I wanted to let this eyeshadow really be the focus. I just did a sweep. Now, I, I, my eyebrows, I thought, was a little bit on the thick side. So I used a eye sh white eyeshadow, and I traced it up along the edge of the eyebrows so that they wouldn't be too thick because sometimes I get rude comments about the eyebrows. Oh. Uh, uh, and if I didn't color them in, people would be the first to complain about how they look like they're see-through and stuff. And you know, so if I could w wake up like this, hey, you know, wouldn't we all? So yeah. Um, but on the subject of wish, I keep on bringing that up again. I made another order last night once I saw that there were things that I'd been waiting on on that pat past wish order that turned out that they had sold out. That things were only for sale for like a couple of days. And after that, uh, it expired. Um, uh, when I'm about to spend money, I'm usually not in a hurry. I think about it and I, you know, a lot of times priorities happen, things happen or when I lost the internet access completely, you know, that affected things. And then when I realized Certain things I wanted, like the trouble available, I had to start the order process all over again. So, anyway, there are some things that I thought that I would like to have in time for my birthday. And I'm thinking that even though other masks are not as good as the N95, uh, I wanted to have something fancy for my birthday. So, I got some lavender sequin mask that I have in the order. And I got a couple of Trump masks. I got a couple of duplicates because there's a couple of people that I'm friends with on Facebook that I want to send each of them a mask because they've done a lot of really nice things for me. And uh, there have been so many generous people out there that realize that I've been going through shit and <laughs> I'm very kind. And I, you know, life doesn't always check. It never checks about whether these things are convenient when things happen. So I'm just grateful that, I still have family, and um, but I just I can't give you any local reports about things going on outside because I just have not been out. I've been listening to a whole lot of radio, um, and uh, including the presidential and vice presidential debate. Uh, and then I actually, since I actually found I had internet, and I found we had internet on by total accident. Uh, I discovered this certain person had a new site on their computer, and that was. So and I'm thinking all that time I could have been working. But that said, since I've had this thing working, um, well, I have the N95, and that's supposed to be the closest thing to the best kind of protection. But that's these things that make me look like a fucking duck. And I really don't like being ugly. 
And this thing really is not attractive, but at least it gives a certain protection. And now I was thinking, oh, one of the things that I think I'm going to get is a blue sequined mask. I'm seeing these masks when I go into casinos, which is very, very rare. And uh, now I see these real glamorous things, but I'm thinking, how good are they though? But I'm still taking, thinking, if you're taking the time to have a really nice ensemble, and you're going out and you're dressed to the nines, have something nice, you know. But then on the same token, if it looks nice, but it's giving you no protection, what good is it? I think so many people into a, built, a place or get on a bus or something, they have to cover their face or something. And most of the things that people are looking at, I look at them and I know damn well it gives you no good at all. I, again, it's just like if you want to keep from having a mosquito bite, and so what you use to protect yourself is a chain link fence. You know damn well the mosquito can go through the chain link fence. And these people that are carrying around, most of the masks that people are wearing, are not going to help you with a tiny, tiny, tiny size of uh, what's it? Uh, um, between one and three microns, uh, the size of the molecules of the uh, virus particles for COVID. I mean, if Trump can get it, anybody can get it. But I can't. The, I, I know you have to balance the economic uh, resuscitation of the economy versus public safety. But I live with somebody who can't afford to get COVID. I can't get it and, and give it to her. My brother is the same thing. He has to. And the thing is that he goes out. He goes out pretty frequently. He has friends that have cars and trucks and stuff. And the thing is that he does because he knows that uh, he can't afford to get my mother exposed. He is very careful. He wears masks and things. His uh, friends, I believe they, I guess, I don't know because I don't go to those places with him. But I'm. they know his situation and they know that he can't take chances so they're doing the best they can as far as social I guess the risk is safer but still he gets out a lot more than I do there's footage you haven't seen because I took it with this in pieces and I would need to even though I believe I do have it on a flash drive I would still need to put it onto my Windows machine which is still at Best Buy because they have to fix the hinge on it uh Oh, you and your family got the Chinese virus? Oh, boy. Um, well, I I don't know what to say. I know my sinus is backing up. I'm sure that that's just a sinus thing that we get. Oh, oh one of the things that uh, they threw in, in my Sephora order, they allow you to choose from some free samples. And this is from a company called Sunday Riley. And it is the six point. Wait, 2.5% or 6.5% retinol blend, CoQ10 and honey, A plus high dose retinoid serum. I get a chance to travel. Uh, I wish I could travel. And the thing is that people are making plans to do things and I'm not convinced it's safe. Say Trump wins and I'm planning on him winning. I was planning on going to the inauguration. You no, know, Washington, D.C. I have a friend I could stay with, but first of all, legally doing the quarantine thing. Shouldn't I have to quarantine someplace before I show up at his place to make sure I don't have it? Then once I'm ready to come back here, then I got to stay someplace for two weeks to make sure I don't have it so I don't bring it back to my mother. And the thing is that where I know myself, the friends that I'm going to be hanging out in Washington, D.C., besides the Trump we're in, things i'm going to be spending time with my friend and the friends that i've made through him there's a, i have a, a small group of people in washington dc that i really have grown fond of and sometimes when you're among friends it's hard to stop to remind yourself oh i can't go in for that hug oh i have to keep uh, masks on and, and you know it's just and then i know once i see some uh do face and I see that black lives are emotions and I'm going to try not to make every frame my talk and making comments about how I feel about the changes that are made because you plus you don't have you don't know whether somebody may overhear you saying something and then decide oh she's one of them and then uh, the violence and stuff and uh, until they get a hold on this the looting and the assholes walking around fucking with people you know that maybe when they realize that it's cutting into their tourism 
Because, of course, if I go there, I'm going to be spending money there. Not a lot of money, but uh, I will always want to go get ice cream at presidential scoops. And this time I wanted to check out a dollar store there. I wanted to experience certain parts of Washington, D.C. Uh, but the, I'm thinking that by the time I'm ready to go to Washington, D.C., Again, I'll probably have no choice but to get a cell phone because I realize that my friend who I normally stay with there, he doesn't have a buzzer in his apartment. And say he's there, uh, I have to wait for people to let me in the building. And most people, they don't want to let strangers in the building, especially if they're Trump haters and they see me wearing my Trump shit. They're not going to let me. I, I saw a guy one time that as I tried to let myself in the door, he closed the door tight so that I couldn't get in. And I had to wait for like two hours and I couldn't get my friend's attention and I could see through the window in his apartment. So if I had a cell phone, I could call him and say, hey, I'm outside. Um, he let me in and he could go and let me in, but uh, I don't have a cell phone. And the more I hear about them, they're so expensive. Even if you got one and I plunked down the money, because I don't want some penny Annie flip phone not to do anything wrong with that. I would want something that has all the internet stuff because I love being on the internet all the time. I want something that I'm would able to have my computers with me and tether them so that I could use things with my wind. Windows computer and, and yet do the filming, which seems like such a convenience with cell phones. And I think that is really wonderful to have something small and portable and film these things. And that's one thing that I think would be a lot of fun. And until I get a cell phone, I is what that's the one thing that took away from my experience in Washington, being stuck outside, not being able to be let in. And it does get chilly, and you're out there waiting and the neighborhood was a neighborhood that was very largely Democrat, very largely liberal. And I'm wearing my MAGA hat and I'm wearing, I mean, when I go to Washington, D.C., almost all the stuff I wear is very political. That's just the way it is. If I know I'm going to, I've got seven days to 10 days someplace and I don't tend to pack lightly. I'm going to have all my different colored Trump shirts. I'm going to have some marijuana stuff. Uh, I just, I have certain things to be color coordinated, but it's stuff that you could generally speak and you're going to see it from a couple blocks away. You know, and so if I have to be looking over my shoulder, worrying about people that are actively looking for a fight, looking for somebody that's sporting something that they don't approve of. Oh, see, I'm noticing something else behind me. This looks blue here. This is a glove. This is something I was thinking I might wear for my birthday. This is the, the top. I really love the uh, neckline of this. And you could see... All the way around, the neckline goes. Yeah, when I was, whenever I go to Washington, D.C., one of the things I notice is almost all the stickers that are left behind, like the graffiti-type stickers and stuff, almost all of it is on the Democrat side. They had stickers calling Brett Kavanaugh all kinds of names. All these groups accusing him of being a rapist. And that really bothered me because obviously if somebody's guilty of something, you want them to be prosecuted. But to falsely accuse somebody, these are people that 99% of these people that said stuff about that man did not know him. And the thing is, how would you feel if you had somebody, a man in your life who you loved, who you knew was not guilty of something? It would be it your father, it could be your husband or your boyfriend or your son or your best friend who happens to be male and what if you knew that they are they did not were not guilty and if they were falsely accused you know that obviously not everybody who accuses somebody of something is telling the truth so if you're going to say you always believe the woman what if they accuse somebody who you love and what they put that poor man through was so disgusting and seeing so many stickers of hate toward trump Trump's family, the Supreme Court justice. Now, on this, on this talk of the Supreme Court justice, I really do want to say something about that. Uh, I am in support of Trump. I am a Republican, a post-9-11 Republican, but I am not right-wing on all the issues. Uh, I am pro-choice, and I am concerned about this lady who Trump wants to come in and have in the Supreme Court uh, I'm concerned that, not that he doesn't have a right to try to get somebody in uh, before Election Day, I, I don't have a problem with that, especially considering there's still a Republican majority. 
my concern is I, like any other pro-choice person, I am concerned about uh, Roe v. Wade becoming overturned because even if it was and it was put to the states, you and I both know that there are going to be states that, that will totally take away a woman's right to choose. And there are women who cannot get it, uh, an abortion in time. The the heartbeat thing, a lot of times a woman doesn't know she's pregnant by the time their uh, heartbeat is detected, then it's too late. And uh, she may not have the means to be able to go across lines, state lines to a place where she can get to a clinic. And laws in more and more states are becoming, making it harder and harder for a woman to get a safe legal abortion. And so now we got this, uh, of all the people that he could have uh, gotten on the Supreme Court, and she may be very well qualified as far as being jurist and stuff. It seems like she's very qualified, but to be so, and I, to be so, uh, it has such strong religious uh, beliefs uh, and to love life so much that and to want to give life and opportunities to other people so much that you will adopt and add build to your family I'm concerned about what if we have abortion and I think that she is dangerous uh, I would have preferred the Hispanic lady to be considered, but I realize if you bring this to an up or down vote, she probably won't get past the Democrats anyway, but still, I am concerned about that. And what I am concerned about, though, is this issue being used as the sole reason why people will vote against Trump, because they will think that uh, in order to safeguard Roe, they need to vote Democrat. And the thing is, that I had to get past that when I had my political evolution. You have, When you're voting, you really have to think about all the issues, and you have to think about... Uh, What's most important? And when you're thinking about your public safety, you're thinking about terrorism, which for me was my big issue. Uh, national security is a big issue. The economy is a big issue. Those are the most important things for me. It would be nice if I could get marijuana legalized everywhere. By the way, in my state of New Jersey, we're voting on that. Uh, my birthday is election day. But I voted already. But now I'm wishing I didn't stick it in the mail. I wish I would have stuck it in. They have these special boxes where you can put them that are supposedly where police precincts are. And it turned out there's one that's really close by. And I would have been able to put my ballot in there. But I'm going to assume that everything's okay. I need to get a tissue. Uh, uh, I hope you don't mind my rambling like this, but I'm glad that we have this. Uh, and uh, Let's see how much uh, battery power I have. It says that I have 1 minute and 13 seconds left, but I could always move it to the uh, core. Oh. So, uh, yeah, I am concerned about I really don't like her. Uh, I think he could have picked somebody better because she was so obviously... I mean, I know the pro-life base will be so they're having your wet dreams right now. But still, how you're scaring the pro-choice people, they're thinking this is somebody who, because if I, I'm trying to put myself in her position, and I can't, obviously, I cannot, somebody feels, but if I have very, very fervent religious beliefs, and I believe so much in the sanctity of life, and I believe that abortion was murder, pure and simple, and I was had, in a position of power, that being in a Supreme Court, any kind of uh, jurist, you are in a position of power and you have certain responsibilities and you have to uphold the constitution, but we're all human beings and human beings have use our brains to interpret things. And what if you are feeling that, Oh, you know what? I cannot. And I don't know that she would use and say, hey, I will recuse myself from this because I cannot uh, separate my Catholic, deep Catholic sanctity of life, uh, fuse with my role as a responsible, impartial, constitutional jurist. You have to make decisions about whether something uh, is in accordance with the United States Constitution. And I don't know how you can uh, separate your religious convictions with that. I know there's different degrees of fervency in your religiosity, but still, now the Catholic Church is getting stricter and stricter with saying that if you are saying pro-choice, that you're pro-choice, then 
we're not going to allow you to receive communion sometimes. And I think one of the, uh, there was a priest that tried to do that to Joe Biden I'm in the middle of church, which I think was really harsh and embarrassing. I don't think I, you, I don't think that you, uh, whoever you are, a preacher or something, you have no right to embarrass somebody, a public figure that's going to, your, going to church and say, oh no, you don't get this. That was really disrespectful. But then again, if you're a priest and you're thinking that, well, what's more, what's the worst disrespect? Disrespecting God and Jesus or, or disrespecting uh, a pub figure, I don't know. I wouldn't have wanted to do it. But uh, yeah, ninth month, yeah, agreed. I agree that uh, you should not be just about ready for the child to, to uh, emerge. And you know what? I don't want this kid. That's a little late. Usually by six months or whatever it is, I know that there are extenuating circumstances. I had a good friend overseas who had uh, uh a reason to get a later abortion and part of it was a uh, dissolution of uh, marriage and it's just a whole bunch of complicated things and i felt for her and it was a really agonizing decision that she made and she felt bad because she had a, a, a child at home and it was just i wouldn't have wanted to be in her shoes it's not a decision that anybody thinks oh good i get to go to uh, abort it's not a happy decision so it just i felt really bad so you have to think about these laws and they have to strike a balance between what is going to not fuck up a person's life. So, yeah, my son is, I'm sorry, this is really ridiculous, but this is the better than sex mascara that I am wearing. This is the, she looks like, and this really does seem to do a lot. The only thing is it's not waterproof. I really like this, but I want to show you something. This looks so much like this ColourPop mascara. This is a red ColourPop mascara. The brush, it looks so much like it. You would think it would be very similar. It's not. This mascara, when I put it on, it starts to dry, and pieces of crumblies, red crumblies, get all over my cheeks. And then when I have it on, as much as I have it on, and if I cry or get emotional or something... Oh my goodness, or if the wind blows up against my eyeballs when I'm outside, I will get these red streaks. But, and I got, I paid $6 for this mascara too. It normally is $8 and I got it for $6. Uh, and I thought, oh, I was really splurging. No, I thought I got the waterproof red from Wish.com when I made those orders the other day, but... Uh, the only colored mascara was that teal blue green color. Uh, so uh, I, I promised I would let you see some other things that I had up here. Uh, ooh, this is a skirt that I'm wearing with this. I like knowing that I have outfits picked out ahead of time. So even if I don't end up doing whatever it is I plan on doing, at least I know that I have a handy outfit that will be nice for something cool. Uh, this I might not need, but just in case I might want something to keep my neck warm. I don't know. This is a bracelet that I was thinking of wearing. This is a knockoff Betsy Johnson. I actually got it to the dollar store up the street. And uh, it was the only one that was in the store. And they had a, uh, a tag on it that explained the factory that made it and stuff. I love the details on it. PJ for Betsy Johnson. And one of the things I'm really happy about this is that the salt air here has not damaged this cheap gold plate kind of whatever the hell thing. But I really like that bracelet a lot. But most of this stuff I'm so afraid to wear because I'm so afraid to lose it. Uh, this bracelet, this is a... What's the name of this? Uh, Napier. You know, they make the cheap costume jewelry. This is fake gold. But this never lost its finish. And this was given to me 
for my birthday by friends who's been dead like four or five years now. He may have been in a few of my earlier YouTube videos uh, where I showed him on the boardwalk and he was drunk a lot of times. Uh, but anyway, he was a really interesting friend of mine and it's a shame that he drank himself to death. Uh, he was found with a bottle of vodka and uh, it's a shame. And, uh, and I really feel bad that I wanted to go to the funeral and everything and we were not getting the Atlantic City press. And uh, I hope you're right about the other justices not trying to undo it. Uh, Kavanaugh, though, I don't know about. Uh, but uh, I like Kavanaugh. I, I, what they put him through is hell. Yeah. They, they totally degraded, degraded him and abused him. And you shouldn't put a person through that. Anyway, this is, uh, I'm probably going to wear that on my other wrist. And uh, I'm thinking I may wear this necklace. This is actually a collar. The only thing is that this will probably get caught in the straps of my uh, face mask. Uh, this is the original necklace that I was planning on wearing. Isn't this nice? I wanted a necklace that was really, I could make as short and choker-like as possible so that it could fit inside the neckline. I think this is gonna be what I'm gonna. But, and I got a guard about that's perfect purple match. So, now, that's one thing I don't have to think about. Oh, oh my sinuses. My sinuses are so bad. Hold that thought. <sighs> Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I can't breathe. So, thank you. Another thing I want to show you, this is the shirt that I wore Tuesday night, that other live stream I did. Um, I want to showcase the, this necklace here. My friend Craig Sterling Thompson of Washington, D.C., he is a, an artist uh, I have, I did a video about his art work. He works with acrylics. He can probably do paint. He is an artist. He's a very talented person. He also does bead work. A couple weeks ago, he sent me a package. One of those padded envelopes from Washington, D.C. and had two necklaces in it. I want you to see the detail on this. I don't know how he gets it. He knows me and he has a talent for finding the perfect colors of beads that I have stuff. I have this wardrobe and you could see this has some teal and some of that um, oh I call it pool blue like when you think of the desert southwest and uh, it's got a peace sign on here and uh, if you see up here this is a Grateful Dead bear. You see that? I, I took a look at that and then all these colors here that will go so well with this. And some of these, you can wear two of them together, you know. This top here, I've never worn before. And I really don't want to have to wait until the springtime. And the thing is, this COVID got everything for everybody all fucked up. And I'm not, so I don't want you to think that I have this attitude that 
I've had a hard, miserable, practically non-existent summer, and nobody else has. I know that for most people, it has not really been normal, unless you got to maybe go on vacations and stuff. And there are people that they go to my town for vacation and stuff. So, uh, but I'm glad that there are some places where people can come here and they can feel and be safe. Uh, I don't want, I'm afraid that the things are going to fall on my floor and then I'll just have more stuff to wash and stuff. This year, I got this on the wild shirt shop. There was like two for $15 or something. And I had to cut it some to the uh, hemline I like, but I really like the color blue. And uh, as you can see this, This jewelry goes with this also. And I love the Paisley print. It's very, very hippie. And it's got an under layer of that bright blue in it. And it's kind of loose fitting and it's comfortable. And I have worn this to uh, the Further Festival. They are the next best thing to the Grateful Dead that included some of the people who used to play with the Grateful Dead. Yeah. All dressed up with nowhere to go. That, that's the thing. Uh, have you guys discovered the DJs on Twitch yet? They have uh, on the weekends, now that I actually have Wi-Fi, even though the thing is that yesterday like I wasn't on Facebook at all, even because Facebook... The video just uses up so much stuff on the computer that I'm not able to do anything else. And it stops things, especially with this Chromebook. Uh, it's just not, as far as computer functionality goes, Chromebooks are really, really crappy. But they're better than nothing. And if I can work on some of these survey type day job tasks where I make pennies toward uh, gift cards and crap. Uh, and they sometimes say, you surveys about the election and they send you surveys about um, that was an interesting survey uh, and I was supposed to do a music rating and done I allowed the thing to check my location and it seemed to think that I was too far away so I missed out on it, it was supposed to be worth $25 they were going to PayPal to me after for like two hours of music rating uh, yeah that's that's the thing is on one hand okay, I'm trying to strike a balance of it, that I, I am Dressing down a lot more these days because I'm not going out places and I don't really wear jewelry anymore. Look at this. I didn't usually I wear bracelets on video because it makes the hands look more interesting when you're getting close. You know, it's more interesting. I never bother with earrings anymore, especially when I'm taking masks on and off because they get caught in the straps. and It really hurts. I took I had these really pretty earrings the last time I was at a casino and they were getting caught in the the straps from my masks. And I just ended up just taking the earrings off because it wasn't, it was just, it was, an, it was detracting from the experience. But when you go and you see these Zoom uh, DJ things where you can watch them on Twitch and then they have a Zoom number that you can call that up and then you're seen on camera. But a lot of times they have uh, uh, fashion dress coats like in a lot of nightclubs. And like, I really like the gothic and industrial ones and the fetish ones when you can wear the black lace and the fishnets and the, the stuff that I wear all the time, like the garter belts and stuff is much more commonplace. And then the thing is that sometimes you'll have these middle-aged and older guys that will show up and they'll wear, uh, they may wear uh, a little tiny uh, black leather studded speedo or something. And he may turn around and dance and give you the full moon. I mean, there's a chance you may th see things like that. And so in th those, you're supposed to be 18 or up. Uh, and you have music DJs, club DJs from all over the world, but especially United States and Canada. And uh, But you have to follow the dress code if you're going to get in on this Zoom things. And they could be fun, but... Most of the people who do that are just sitting and watching, but I think it's fun to get into the spirit and if DJ's playing a song that you like, go ahead and dance and stuff. But, uh, and the thing is that sometimes you find out about that and by the time uh, you put your makeup on and stuff, 
then their DJ's finally over, or you're fucking tired. You know, sometimes I get a later start at my makeup than others. Like I've discovered some of the errands that I do during the day, especially if I'm trying to hide and get these gangbangers and these really creepy people around here. I actually wear only sunblock. I put my then I put a knit hat that covers most of my scarf just so that my hair does not show at all. Then the mask is covering me right here. The hat is covering me so you can barely see my eyelids. And if I wear something like sweatpants or jeans or something really normal trouser-wise, and I wear like a lumberjack shirt or something, you will never know that it's me. And I can go and get whatever, to hopefully keep away from people. Uh, I can check my the mailbox. And if there's a bill that needs to be paid, I can go and stick it in the mailbox. Um, sometimes I can even go into the garden and get things we have been getting well, I have rather been getting flat leaf parsley and uh, fresh basil, but mostly most of that's gone. Uh, fresh mint. Uh, there's lavender. There's sage there. Uh, but uh, now there's a video that my mother and I are going to be working together about a pet named Esmeralda. But that's the tea. And my mother's going to have to tell the story. She could do a better job than me. And I, that is something to look forward to for a future point in time. So uh, I don't want this to rag on and on and on and on and on. But let's see what's in the kitchen. Do you want to see what's in the kitchen? Oh, she's not in there. Oh. Again. As to opposed to when. Oh, my mother's on the phone to somebody. Okay. Well, look who's here. Look who's here. Tommy boy. Hey, my man. My sweet. Oh, you think where's my cat? I got cat. I got cat. So, want to see what the dinner ends up being? Here, I'll turn the light on. This is fried cabbage. And this is fried cabbage and egg noodles and bacon. And, uh, you know what? I'm going to get a fork. I'll give you a little trivial about me. I don't like the taste of metal in my mouth. So I prefer plastic forks. Uh, I'm not a scuzzball. So I'm going to get bowl of some kind. One of my favorite dishes is this little octagon thing. And hello Tabby boy. And don't and you're not getting up on this pillow. No 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 no. You can get up on the rocking chair but you can't get on mommy's pillow. So there can you see I don't know if you could really see this. Oh, she put a, a bowl out for me already. Boy, I don't need to have that out. See. Oh, before I eat and get all big gut and stuff, this is my belly ring. I got tired of the last thing I had, I had this total clear thing. And uh, some of the companies that I bought some of my first nose rings in bulk with. And I really like those bioplast or the imitation bioplast, which are the different colored rubbery piercing jewelry. And I had a couple of nose rings that I really liked, but they started getting the material started degrading, started snagging. So I ended up figured they're not safe to use anymore. So um, I'm thinking of ordering fresh copies of those damaged damaged jewelry. I'm not eating all this. I'm just going to 
taste a little bit of it. I usually film when I'm hungry because once I start eating, all of a sudden it's like my gut grows and I look like I'm pregnant. Mm. This probably wouldn't photograph well because it's all light colored food, but not bad. Mm. Oh, I'm going to show you guys something. If you can even see this. I don't know if you could see that. That was just a newspaper clipping of a picture. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to turn this light out because I don't want anything showing any oops okay oh I hope state of New Jersey votes to um, legalize it I really do uh, it's one thing they say that the the state of New Jersey people is about 60% in favor of. And I hope that's right. Uh, did my eyes water when my nose was pierced? You know, it's interesting. When, I, when my nose was pierced, I only had three drops of blood. There was no pain. Uh, I was under the influence of a little bit of cannabis. It didn't hurt. Mm. Now, when I had these pierced, there's one thing that I could have done again. I would have liked to see the thing is when you know that you're getting pierced in a ring, that can make it so that the guy using the straight thing, he doesn't need to get it totally straight because. If you're pierced with a captive bead ring, it's always going to be a perfect circle. But if you're actually piercing it with a straight bar, and by that, I'll show you what I mean. When I got my nipples pierced, I wish that I had gotten straight bars put in. I'll tell you why. Because if I'd gotten straight bars put in, then it would have been perfectly matching. And I never found out that they were crooked. I don't want to touch these because these, I don't want to. Oh, you know what? Fuck it. These are, in case you're curious, 12 gauge bars. These are supposed to be tongue bars. But if you have 12 gauge piercing, and you see, if you were pierced at least with something straight, then when you got pierced, you could have them totally straight across. It would look much more aesthetically pleasing. With rings, which I now have my original rings back in, it looks perfectly fine. But when you put bars in, if they weren't pierced with bars, they could be mismatched. And that's almost inevitable. And that's just one thing that really bums me out. Mm. Sorry, I'm eating out. I'm hungry. Usually, I end up filming really late at night when nobody's watching because you guys are all la la la. But I'm finally all dolled up and all that stuff. And it's finally kind of quiet, you know. But another thing getting about the piercings and cartilage, I have a. Uh oh. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to plug this in. I'm now getting the battery thing. Well, okay. 
okay. I hope that I, I rescued things. I got I'm plugged in again. When I got my nose pierced, I have a, a deviated septum. And as you can see, my nose is a little crooked. Now, do you see the nose ring I'm wearing right now? I want to do a separate video about this because there's so many people that are really interested in body piercing information and it's easy enough to have somebody who's a professional piercer have a channel and have his or her experience. And I'm not discounting that, but there is something to be said for somebody who is an enthusiast enthusiast for this stuff has been wearing the stuff for years, has some years of experience with it and can talk about what works for them. So this is a spiral and but getting back to the cartilage is kind of twisted it's kind of crooked and the thing is certain kinds of jewelry are going to hang crooked on you now let me get the earrings or whatever okay I always keep my piercing jewelry in here. For a while there, clickers were all the rage. And this is when I was still ordering in bulk from sites like Body Candy and uh, oh, what's the other one? Painful Pleasures was another one. And um, Pugster, that was one of the first companies that I ordered bulk uh, belly rings from. Well, I saw the clickers and I thought they were absolutely beautiful and were a little pricey, but you had some a showpiece piece of jewelry for your price. And I like the idea that you could put them in and click them, stuck, stick them in, whatever. So this is a, a clicker. And I really like the detail on it. Of course, it used to be I had one that was teal, teal painted metal, and the other was uh, fuchsia. So anyway, you stick them in. But now the problem is if you have a deviated septum, instead of it hanging up straight like this, it goes crooked. See, because my nose is twisted, kind of, this ends up hanging like this. It really bumps me out. Now, if all you have is a circular, like a captive bead ring, it'll never be crooked. And this twisty thing here, this won't be crooked except for the fact that because it's a corkscrew, this part looks closer and this part looks further away. But now the thing about this kind of piercing is that because it's an open corkscrew, these will get caught on things. If you're blowing your nose, it will actually, this is one kind of piercing that actually will get caught. And if you have any kind of a, a light weave blanket, like a crocheted comforter or something, it will get caught. Don't get caught on your belly rings too. And let me tell you, that shit hurts. Uh, but really like a curved horseshoe rings. But I understand that that's really a, a, not a very professional term. But those, depending on, I like them when they close, when they're less open looking and they're more closed looking. And I really love these purple ones that I had, but they were made of that bioplast and it was really disintegrating. I'm going to show you that in a second. Okay. Okay, this is a purple bioplast nose ring. Everything's great about it except it's got a snag. Came with two, you know, matching balls and stuff. I want to replace this. And this is a, a purple painted titanium. And the paint was a real crappy paint job. If you can look at it, you see paint flaked off it. You don't want to reinsert anything that's got paint coming off of it. That is bad. You don't want flecks of this stuff coming in, in your piercings. You don't want snaggy plastic, whatever the fuck this crap is. Excuse my language here. Uh, this was another part of another belly ring that the uh, jewel just came out guy aim unglued so if you're going to buy crappy jewelry you know expect that it's going to have a shelf life mm. 
good. The bacon makes that. Okay. You know, I've been going on 2 minutes, 23 seconds, and 32 seconds and counting. Uh, I don't know. Oops. Oh, wait a minute. I can't. Oh, I can't unplug this right now. You know what I am going to do? I'm going to see if I can bring a cat. Hold on. No, I can't find her. Sorry, you guys. Sorry about that. I was hoping that I could find my cats. And you know what? They're hiding from me. Cassie, I believe, was allowed into my brother's room. The secret is she usually is not, these cats are usually not allowed in his room because they get on everything. They knock things over. Statues, glassware, the cats knock over. Cassie is taken to, if Tabby Boy is, say, laying down underneath a chair, Cassie will get on a table overhead and she will knock things over so they is really very mischievous and sometimes my cat, tabby boy will just back away from her rather than deal with I wonder if tabby boy's under my, my bed Of course, getting him from the bed will be another story. But you know what? He's not here. Oh, boy. No, sorry. Uh, there are no kitties in my room. No kitties in the front grow room. There are no kitties... Um, in my mother's room? I don't think so. Actually, now, they have been catching mice. Tabby Boy caught a mouse in my brother's room. Tabby Boy caught another mouse in my brother's office. Mm. This is good. Eat this real soon. So, all right. No kitties here. If you like this video, well, I guess I, guess I should sign off now. Um, whoops. I want to. I hope that that wasn't obscured or rude or anything. That was not my intention. But uh, I'm wearing underwear, so I'm not worried about it. Um, okay, I'm going to try to do this format. On my normal uh, scheduled posting days, which if you don't already know, are Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. If I can keep a Wi-Fi connection, why it's even on, I don't know. Because I thought the day we're waiting uh, for a payment. And the thing is that um, it's gotten to the point where we have to decide which bills get paid. And a lot of them are going to be expecting something thrown to them. So we're going to have to really, things are really tricky right now. So uh, I will try my best to do this to keep my schedule until I can finally get my other computer back. I really don't know what's going on with that. And with the COVID and all that stuff, I don't know what's going on. But uh, 
enjoy. Uh, please be safe. And I hope you enjoy the things that I am working on that are going to be coming up. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm trying to turn this off and for some reason it's not it's not showing. Um, awkward. Okay, you guys, I don't know. Looks like it's still it says live. 10 minutes, 28 seconds. I keep on trying to click hit end screen. Okay, yes. <laughs>